favorite service of the year. <laughs> well, we didn't put it in the bulletin. We didn't want anyone to know. In case you decide to stay home. Listen, there's no pressure. Love, love don't pressure you. Pastor Dirk, he's not here to judge you. He loves you. No. Today is foot washing <laughs> service. And, you know, some of you, you know, you taking care of the sick or you worked in home health care or, you know, this is no sweat to you. But some of you, it's a big deal. You know, I, I want you to be obedient. And don't feel condemned if you don't participate. You're not going to hell because you don't wash feet. Okay? Okay? But, you know, pastor reads a lot. I like to get in the minds of other preachers. and I like to get on Sermon Central and read these. I look at different denominations. and It's amazing how many of these guys like say, you know, you ain't got to do that today. You know, that was... That was apostolic age, not for today. I'm like, well, how, what Bible are you reading there, buddy? <laughs> We're almost going to put the scripture right up here. Y'all can read it. And then Holy Spirit, you know, he'll speak to your heart. You know, I'll give you the instructions exactly how it'll look. You know, exactly we'll have a order with it. And, and, and I know some of you are like, we're like, oh, man, I, I got a pedicure. I at least wash my feet for today. I mean, man, I've, I've washed my feet in weeks. I've been getting ready for this service. <laughs> Have someone else wash them for me. Right? This is the most humble, 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 humble act in the kingdom of God right here. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Set the example for us. Yes. And today's one of them days where the word of God needs to be applicable to your life. I mean, do it. <laughs> that, that was too harsh, wasn't it? <laughs> James 1.22. Don't just be here. I know what I should do. And do it, right? I mean, we, we battle with all the commands like that. There's some I don't like, and they really challenge me, and, you know, and it's, this is just one of them, okay? But James says, don't just listen, apply it. Now, when it comes to feet, well, I'm just going to say that feet's like the ugliest part of your body. In fact, God would take the ugliest part of your body, and he would call them beautiful, only when you're doing what? What is it, Eli? Taking the gospel, the good news. Romans 10 and 15. God says your feet are beautiful for those who are sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. So how many of you got beautiful feet? Yeah, right. All the grime and the calluses and Everything else that goes with it, okay? We're all family here. We're not here, I mean, judging one another by the looks of our feet, okay? It's our body. We want the spirit. So obedience, submitting in obedience to the word of God brings the spirit. Jesus said in John 6, 63, my words are spirit and they are life. So I want my feet to be beautiful, <laughs> not only sharing Jesus, but participating. This is a, this foot washing service is something that you find, it's, it's unique. I mean, where, how many of you know you go to a unique church? <laughs> I've been a little strange all my life. <laughs> Okay. But that's why Paul says that we're aliens. Yeah. We're to be different. We should be like everybody else. You know, when, when people say that, you know, you guys are a little weird down there. You know? 
That might hurt your feelings. That pumps me up. <laughs> I love stuff like that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> right? Because foot washing is weird. It is. It's weird. It, you know, it's just a, it's a, it's a place where, you know, if you got to humble yourself, and any time that you humble yourself, you're putting yourself in a low position. Now, we live in a world where it's superiority. You serve me. You do what I tell you. You do what I want. Okay? In the kingdom of God, humility says, I'm going to put you first. What is it that you want? Okay? You can challenge yourself when you go to Walmart today, you know? Parking close is overrated. Park far away and walk. Park by the buggy for the return. And you're going to be bringing groceries out anyway. Humility always puts someone else before you. Where pride, pride is all about me. And what's God say about pride? Well, he says in two of the epistles at the end of the Bible, James 4, 6 and 1 Peter 5, 5, he said, I resist it. I resist that. So it's an arrogance. It wants its own way. You know, the, the, pro, the writer of Proverbs said in two, in two chapters, a couple chapters away, he said, there seems to be a way which is right unto a man. But in the end, it leads to destruction. Yep. Pride will say, let's go this way. Humility says you can only go one way, and that's Jesus. The only way to the Father is through the Son. <laughs> Jesus bridged the gap between holy God and sinful man. He did it all. That's, that's what we're celebrating him. That's, that's why this is all about Jesus. And the salvation that he purchased for us. But pride will just say, ah, oh, you can save yourself. Nah, you can't. You're not good enough. You're not holy enough. You, know, you need to trust in Jesus. So Jesus, he come as Lord of Lords, as the Son of God, and he demonstrated foot washing. It is so weird that even the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they don't even mention it. Only one gospel writer, John, and what was John called? The one he loved. The one that Jesus loved. He's all about love. And you can read his gospel. He wrote three epistles. He got the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he's, he's all about love. And, and Jesus said this in John 13. He said, a new commandment. Everybody say a new command. He said, I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. And he also had to love one another. He said, by this, by this, by loving, everyone will know you're my disciples if you have love for one another. So how do they know that you're a Christian? Because I tell them I go to church. And because I do this and I do that. Well, now love is evident and it's an action. And it'll be seen. It'll be seen out of your life. And people know love. You can't argue love. And, and love will do what love does, and that's what's supposed to be coming out of us. This is why foot washing is a humble act. It's a humble act of obedience. God said, I'll resist pride, but I'll give you more grace. Anybody need God's grace? Yes. To the humble. So I challenge you today. You know, how, many, how many of you, how many in this church have been coming for, you know, like, more than three years. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to ask any more questions. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm praying for you. Okay. Jesus said that he didn't come to be ministered to or to be served, but he come to serve and to come to pay a price for you. Mm -hmm. Jesus, everything he ever did, he did it for someone else, not himself. So what Jesus is saying is, he say, let's say you're having some personal struggles. Let's let's say you're, uh, let's say you're having trouble dealing with life. Let's say you're at your wit's end. Let's let's say you feel like 
You're so anxious, you feel like I'm about ready to have a nervous breakdown. Okay? You know what Jesus would tell you to do? <clears throat> Go help somebody. Yeah. Because the whole problem is, is you've become so inner focused, so self focused. And you've made it it's all about you, what you can attain, and what you can get. And let me tell you, a very selfish person, it, let me tell you, they're full of all kinds of troubles. Because you'll never find satisfaction that way. It comes from looking out. God created you to love him, but he created you to love mankind. And when you love others, that love comes out of you. And you serve others, and you do for others. You know what it does to that burden that builds up in you when you bear someone else's burden? You forget all about yours. It just disappears. So you're battling with something. You're feeling frustrated. And, you know, it's like, okay, let's go to the nursing home. Let's go to the hospital, visit someone. Let's, let's bake a pie for... Aunt Jane down the street, you know, serve somebody else. Immediately, it'll lift off you. Let me tell you, you wash feet today, it's, it's a blessing God wants to pour out upon you. It's a form of worship. It's worship. And you know, we worship God in many ways. We sing to him and we pray, and, you know, but th this, is, this is a worship at a high level. Sometimes the greatest way to get up is to get down. When you get down on your hands and knees and you wash feet, it's a very humble act. It's what Jesus did. I mean, Jesus was the boss. He was the foreman. He's like the working foreman, you know? You know, most foremen just sit in the air conditioner and tell what everybody to do. No, he got involved. He was there to help you. And that's what he did. He come to serve you. Now, let's look at this. 17 verses, and then we're going to apply the word of God this morning and we're going to give full instruction for you but here jesus is again let's put this in perspective here in john 13 1 through 3 jesus has already come into jerusalem and here he is in the upper room he celebrated the passover feast with his disciples his hour is come jesus is getting ready to be arrested to go on trial to suffer, to die like no man. He told the disciples five times, it's a must, that I must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things of the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees. I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, but I'm going to rise again the third day. They never heard it. They're like, no, you're not. No, we're going to fight for you, Jesus. You're the Messiah. We've been with you three and a half years. You're not going to die. No. And so... So here he is, he's come knowing that this is all going to take place, and he's going to face the wrath of God. He's going to take your punishment upon himself, and where's his whole focus at? Not on him. His focus is upon the disciples. And even Judas, Judas, the betrayer, the money lover, the guy that was a treasurer, he was stealing out of the account. Even Judas, who betrays him for 30 shekels of silver, Jesus is going to get down and wash his feet. Knowing full well what Judas is going to do, Judas is going to wash his feet. Now, that might be, I mean, we're family here. It ain't too bad. You imagine, you know, someone from the, from the Middle East, some, you know, one of those, one of those enemies. <laughs> When you wash their feet, well, it, this is what Jesus is showing us that love will do. You know? So here he is, and what's he do? He, he gets up from the table, this Passover feast, says the devil entered into Judas. He even told Judas when he came in the garden of Gethsemane, go do, do what you got to do. Okay? So he, he was, a, he was his, his thoughts of his plan of what he was going to do, is now going to be fulfilled. He's going to betray Jesus. And I really think with Judas, I, I think that he probably thought, I got a chance to get this money. And I've seen Jesus three and a half years. Every time the crowd come to give him, he slipped away. He's like disappeared. You know, he was like a Houdini kind of, 
I don't want to be very needy with Jesus, but you know, I'm going to get the money, and Jesus will get off the hog. But it didn't work out that way. So here Judas is. The devil's out now entered him. And Jesus gets up from the table, and he takes a garment, and he puts a towel around him, and he takes water, puts it in a basin, and he begins to wash the disciples' feet, and he begins to dry them with the towel. So this, this in, the, in, the, in the scriptures, it was customary for you to have water because they wore sandals, their feet were very dirty, but never was it customary, especially for the Jews, to wash somebody's feet. They had a slave, or they had a Gentile that, that they made that would, that would wash the feet. That was a, it was a, when, when Jesus gets up to do this, never would a rabbi, never would a Jew, what, this, this is just, a, never would the king of kings or lord of lords do something like this. Right. But Jesus is showing his disciples after three and a half years of all the things that they've seen and they learn from Jesus. This is one of the last lessons he's going to teach them. And it's a lesson on humility. And it's a lesson on love. And he's going to begin washing the disciples' feet. Now let me give you some instruction before we go on. Okay? Because I know a lot of you have uh, inquiring minds right now. Here's the plan. When we close out in verse 17. Stephanie's going to fill up the water jug, and Stephanie and I are going to start first. She's going to, she's going to take off her shoes and socks. She's going to sit in this chair, and then I'm going to sit in this chair. And then whoever is the, whoever the Holy Spirit says for you to wash their feet, if that person, okay, let, let's say the Holy Spirit's telling you that you're going to wash my feet. Okay, that person will come and, come and sit up here, okay? And that person that's sitting here, okay, the Holy Spirit saying, you, you're going to wash their feet, you come sit by them, and then you sit by them, okay? Same thing on that side. If somebody's telling them you're going to wash Stephanie's feet, you'll be the first one over there. And that, that will be the, the order. After you take... Take one towel, put it in the water, rinse it out, wash both feet, take another towel, and dry off both feet. And then once, once you're done, you'll get up, <coughs> the, they'll get up, and then you'll sit down, and then someone else will come and wash your feet. Now, if you struggle, <coughs> if you struggle with <coughs> maybe getting up or down, I'm going to be up here to help assist you. Now, you see, 20 years of doing this, it's the first year the chairs have been turned this way. A couple reasons for that, and a couple plumbers' pants issues last year, so. <laughs> that the Reverend way of saying that, okay? So, so at least they'll be facing this way. And then you can also assist by getting up, maybe pushing off the altar, okay? So if you, if you need some assistance, Pastor's here to help you. <coughs> Let's go on, and then we'll see if anybody has any questions. Okay. Now, Peter, he struggles with the whole thing. Three and a half years, Jesus, I see you raise the dead and heal the sick and walk on water and all of America. I know you're the Messiah. You're the Son of God. You're not, you're not doing this. You definitely ain't washing my feet. And I've heard people come to me and tell me stories later and say this and say that. I said, you missed it. You missed it because you made it all about you. You missed the whole thing. And that's what Peter's, that's where he's at right here. And Jesus straightens him out and it's like, I'm filthy. I, I need you to wash me all over. I'm I'm filthy. It's like Isaiah's vision in Isaiah 6, you know, it's a, I'm unclean, okay? <clears throat> so, Jesus says this about foot washing, okay?
Okay. This, this is this is red ladder here. He said, if you call me master and lord, and that's right, I, I am. He said, if if I'm master and lord, wash your feet. You also ought to wash one another's feet. You should do this. Because I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. That's pretty clear, isn't it? It's pretty clear. She said, I did this. And there ain't none greater than me. And because I've done it, you ought to do it also. He's saying, don't put yourself at superior level. Come down. He said, well, I, I got a few other issues. Yeah. God will give you grace. He said, I set an example for you. Do as I've done unto you. Now we'll close with this verse. And then we're going to get started. You might want to go fill that up. Jesus says, barely, barely. Everybody say, barely, barely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mom, mom and dad yelling at you, calling you by your first and middle name. <laughs> you better listen to what I'm just going to say right here. When Jesus would say, barely, barely, like in Matthew, Matthew 3, and Jesus say, barely, barely, except the man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You better get saved, what he's saying. Well, here he's saying, barely, barely, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. He said, if you know these things, happy, <laughs> happy are you. <laughs> happy are you if you do them. <laughs> He's saying what? He said, this is a fulfillment of, con you'll be content, you'll be happy. It's like going and doing something for somebody. You know, after you go to the hospital and visit someone, you walk out and they're like, man, I'm really went, I'm glad I went and seen them. I'm really glad I went to help, help so-and-so. You feel so much better when you do the right thing. And Jesus is saying the same thing about foot washing. He says, happy are you if you do that. Glory to God. So my challenge to you as pastor, I pray that you'll participate of this very worship service. Let me ask, is there anybody who has any questions? Let's try to use, uh, try to use one towel to wash and one to dry.